Hello everyone. Today I'm going to introduce to you a brand new Laravel app development kit called Redprint. Redprint can be a very good starting point for your next big Laravel project. It makes your development process a lot faster, cleaner, and lets you concentrate on what matters most, the application logic. In this video, we're going to see how you can set up Redprint on your local development machine. To do that, you'll need a Apache or Nginx server running PHP 7.0 or later. We are using a WAMP-based server on a Windows machine. We have copied all the installation files, the project we have downloaded from Code Canyon into a directory and pointed it to a virtual host on our web server. You can Google on how to create a virtual host if you don't know that. Once you're done setting up the redprint.local virtual host, or you can actually name it anything you like, you have to head to the redprint.local slash install this URL. You'll be presented with this installer Click on check requirements. This window shows you if your development server is ready to run Redprint. Any server that is capable of running Laravel 5.5 is capable of running Redprint. The minimum PHP version supported is 7.0 because Laravel 5.5 requires you to have a PHP version of at least 7.0. Everything else listed here is the same as Laravel 5.5 requirement. Let's click on check permissions. Laravel needs storage slash framework, storage.logs, bootstrap slash cache. These folders to be writable by the application. So the installer is checking if your directory permissions are correct. Next, click on configure environment. Here you can change your application name like so and this is actually what defines whether Redprint is turned on or not. Redprint uses a distinct app environment called Redprint so that when you upload your application to production and set your app environment to local or development or production, Redprint hides itself. Since Redprint has code generation capabilities, it is never recommended to upload Redprint in Redprint mode. In this case, we're developing on our local machine, so we selected Redprint. App debug should be true for development machine as well. And this app URL is correct for us. If you used any other URL for your virtual host, you can change it here. Click on Setup Database. In this window, you're going to configure your MySQL or Postgres or whatever database server you're using. In our case, we're using MySQL. This local host is correctly configured and this is the default MySQL database port. And before click on, clicking on install and proceeding to the next step, you'd want to make sure that this database is created on your local machine. To do so, you can use a tool like phpMyAdmin. Or if you want, you can use tools like Navicat or MySQL Workbench, both of which are great softwares. In this case, we're using phpMyAdmin because it is very widely used. So, we're going to create a database called Redprint underscore local here. Great, so our database is set up. Give your database username and password here. For local development, root username and password is fine. On production machine, you'd want to change it to something more secure. Wait for the installer to finish. Great, 
the application was installed successfully and you're given with the administration password and username let's save it somewhere else once we're done with that click in this button to exit the install this is the home page of Redprint, which you can change once you start developing with Redprint. Now, let's log in to the back end. We're going to use the username and password we got after the installation. and you're presented with this license verification window. You'll need to put your Code Canyon purchase code over here and click on verify and Redprint will be licensed for you. I'm going to pause this video for a while and verify my installation. Once you have verified your installation, you're presented with this home page on Redprint. On dashboard, you can see what files are created on your application till now. And this is the builder and this is build tools, relationship viewer and builder, application updater, role and permission system, user management system. So that's it guys. We have successfully installed Redprint. In a later video, I'm going to show you how you can use Redprint effectively to speed up your development and really do cool stuff with it. Thank you so much for watching this.